Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to you to our online children's worship on Sunday the 25th of July. It's hard to believe that the end of another school year is upon us and I wonder what you will take away from this last year. What if you stop and think about it for just a moment, do you remember most or what stands out above everything else? Perhaps it was that period of time where you were having to um, homeschool or maybe you've had to be in isolation. Maybe you've missed friends over this last year. Or maybe you remember returning to school for the first time after lockdown or the fun of these final weeks of term. Quite often, although maybe not this year, it's easier for us to think about the good things in our lives rather than the bad, isn't it? But life is actually full of ups and downs, of good things and bad things. And this morning we're going to hear a story about someone who had a lot of bad things happen to them, as well as some good things too. See if you can spot when good things happen and when bad things happen in the story. And as you listen, you might want to put your thumbs up when something good happens, or you might want to put your thumbs down when bad things happen. But before we get into our story, we need to set the scene. For our story takes place in a place called Bethlehem. What, I wonder, do we already know about Bethlehem? That's right, it's the place where Jesus was born However, the story we're going to tell this morning happened a long, long, long time before Jesus was born. And Marie's going to tell us that story now. A lady called Naomi lived in a town called Bethlehem with her husband, who was called Elimelech, and her two sons, Malon and Kilion. Now Bethlehem was in the land of Judah, the land where the Israelites had lived after their time as slaves in Egypt, and it was a place where everyone usually had plenty to eat. Unfortunately, one day there was a famine in that land, so there was no food growing and nothing to eat. No rain fell and the crops didn't grow and there wasn't enough food to go round. The people were very hungry. Elimelech decided to leave Bethlehem and take his family a long way to a country called Moab, where there was no famine and there was plenty of food for everyone. Sadly, not long after they reached Moab, Naomi's husband Elimelech died. So Naomi was left with her two sons, Malon and Kilion. These two boys decided to get married when they were old enough to two Moabite girls, whose names were Ruth and Orpah. After a few years of living happily in Moab, Malon and Kilion both died, leaving Naomi without her husband and without her two sons. After a while, Naomi decided that it was time to return to her town of Bethlehem. She had heard that things had improved there and the famine was over, so there was enough food to eat. When Naomi told her two daughters-in-law that she was returning to Bethlehem, they decided to go with her. But as they were about to leave Moab, Naomi stopped. She turned to her daughters-in-law and said to them, Why come with me, girls? You'd be much better off to stay in Moab. Your family's here and you are young. You could get married again. Really, I think you should turn around and go back to Moab and leave me to return to Bethlehem on my own. Orpah was sad and cried many tears as she hugged her mother-in-law but decided that she should return home to her family and her customs. Ruth, however, clung to Naomi. She refused to let go and made the most amazing promise to Naomi. She promised that she would never 
leave all these other things behind and go with her mother-in-law. In fact, she promised never ever to leave Naomi for as long as they lived. Did you spot the good and the bad things that happened in that story? How do you think Naomi felt? Sometimes sad things happen in our world and in our lives and it seems as though God is far away and doesn't care about us. Something we've perhaps experienced this year more than ever before. But what we learn from our story is that even though that's how it must have felt for Naomi, Ruth stayed with Naomi. And in doing so, God showed her just how much he cared for and how he is always with her, even when, and perhaps especially when, things are difficult. And that's the message we wanted to share with you today as you prepare to finish another year at school and have a break over the summer holidays. Whatever this year has been like for you, God has been with you and he will continue to be with you through the summer and into the next school year and beyond. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we know that life can have its ups and downs. Thank you for the many good things in our lives. Please remind us to seek help in the hard times and please help us to also share our happiness with other people. Thank you that you are with us in both the good and bad times. Amen. 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 We hope you have a fantastic summer break and we're really looking forward to hopefully seeing you in person mm. in September. God bless.